Today's presentation is about tetrachords and major scales. Starting off with tetrachords, this is a specific pattern of notes and intervals, and it's specifically four notes that are separated by three intervals. So if you're given a starting note, the interval pattern you're going to follow is you're going to move up a whole step, a whole step, and then a half step. On the keyboard, if we start on the note C, and we move up a whole step, that's going to give us the note D. Then we're going to move up another whole step to E natural. And then finishing up with our half step to F. Star sounds like the beginning of the Adams Family theme, if you're familiar with that. Okay. Um, you're going to notice that starting on C, we're using all the white keys very naturally there. And I listed the interval in between each of those because there's no black key between E and F. So, do you see any other all-natural tetrachords on the keyboard, kids? Do you? That's right! There's another tetrachord starting on the note G that moves from here to up a whole step to A, up another whole step to B, and then our half step from B to C. There we go. So, two tetrachords uh, that we've looked at, the one starting on C leads to F, and the one starting on G leads to C. So you can see the pattern of intervals there from C to F, and then G to C. To make a major scale, all we're going to do is say that those two tetrachords are separated by a whole step. So the final pattern for a major scale would be whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, or tetrachord, whole step, another tetrachord. So that gives us our full C major scale. Simple enough, right? So let's try that again, starting on the note D this time. Okay, so there's our starting pitch, D. We're going to move up a whole step to an E. And we're going to move up another whole step. This involves one of the black keys. Now, we've got two options there. We could either call that F sharp or G flat. Well, we don't want to skip the letter F, so we're going to call that F sharp. After that, we move up a half step to G. And that finishes our first tetrachord. And it's a good thing that we didn't use G flat because that would have given us two different G's. And that is not allowed. Okay, so we're going to move up a whole step from there to A. And A is going to begin our next tetrachord. So we move from A up a whole step to B. Up another whole step. Now, are we going to use C sharp or D flat? That's right, we're going to use C sharp. Okay, and then we move up a half step so that we are on D. That's very good because we need to start the scale and end the scale on the same note. And we did that. So putting that all together, we get D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Okay, so again, this is all based on the ascending pattern of intervals, and to play it descending, you just play it backwards. Quick review. Four pitches separated by three intervals, whole, whole, half, that would be a tetrachord, and of course, we need to use consecutive letter names, so whether that involves sharps or flats, um, we need to use the letter names in alphabetical order. For a major scale, we're taking two tetrachords, separating them by a whole step, and we're also using consecutive letter names. It's very important to notice too that each letter name is only used once until you get to the top note, which should be the same as the bottom note. If you start the D scale and end up with a D sharp at the top, you know that you messed up the intervals somewhere there. Okay, And uh, 
the last thing I'll say about major scales is you can only use sharps or flats. You should never mix the two. So for the C major scale, we know that that has no sharps or no flats. In the D major scale, if we use each letter name once, we'll end up only using sharps. We won't have any flats in there. Conversely, if we used the B flat major scale, that would have only flat notes in there. You would not have any sharps. That's why, if you've ever noticed, key signatures are written only with sharps or flats. You will, except for maybe some rare exception in modern music where the composer was trying to play a trick on you, um, you might see some mixing there. But for uh, the uh, very vast majority of common practice, you'll only have sharps or flats in the key signature, never both.